Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Pastor Brad Williams, Chula Vista Seventh-day Adventist Senior Pastor. And um, we're here today with a very special guest who came a long ways to be with us. Pastor uh, uh, Riano has come over from the island of Yap to uh, paint, believe it or not. He's also a volunteer pastor and uh, looking forward to entering into, into the ministry full time. And uh, I'm gonna let, I guess I'll let him tell you about that. But uh, in any case, we're, we welcome you here today. And we're really glad that we can take a few minutes with you before you go back home to get your testimony, to find out how God has led in your life. I'm glad to be here in the Chula Vista Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I'm glad to share my story, how God led me to this faith and to this truth right now. I was born in the country of Philippines in the province of Brumblon. I was born and raised in a, in a Catholic family by a very devout Catholic uh, family, my great-grandparents to my parents. So that's how the way I was trained as a young man mm. up to my boyhood. So I sought God. I was in the church in my youth. I was in the choir. I joined the activities of the Catholic Church. And finally, when I got to high school, I have this dream of becoming a priest. So I started every summer when the seminarians come, I started the training, actually. Because what we believe in the Catholic faith is that whenever there is a priest and a member of the family, you've got this what we call absolution. Absolution means all the sins of your family members and all of your clans will be forgiven. And that's, they have a place in heaven. So I have that great dream and plan. Okay, I, if I'll be there, I, if I'll be a priest and we have an absolution, my grandparents, my great grandparents and my family will be saved in heaven because of that. And so when I get graduate in high school, I have my plan of becoming a priest. But somehow, somewhere, I met a friend. I met a friend and he gave me a Bible. And I started to read the Bible. And in the Bible, there in the words of Jesus in the Book of Matthew, chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8, I have learned a lot of things about the Sermon on the, on the Mount and everything that he taught. And all throughout the book, I have read, somehow I caught that, uh, Jesus told that you do not call a man father, or you do not pray a repetitious prayer in the streets, or you do not bow down to images, you do not have those idols in the church. But all these things, this is the things that we are doing in the church. So sitting in the front of the church pew, I have come to realize all these things we are doing in contrary to what the Bible says. But still we believe that this is, this is the, the true church. But anyway, somehow the Lord has led me to another friend who knows a lot of things in the Bible. So I have started talking to him and then I started asking him some questions. Fortunately, he belongs to a church called Iglesia Ni Cristo, a church of Christ originated in the Philippines in 1914. And then I started asking questions about his faith. And I have just planned to tell him about my faith. And then I discovered that I don't know anything about the Bible. He has a lot of things from the Bible. He memorized his text. And he told me about his church. And he told me even that the name of their church is in the Bible, in Romans 16, 16, Iglesia Ni Cristo. So I started looking into this religion. When I came to that church, I was so impressed. But I was about to go to the seminary, but I have to go and attend this church first of my friend. The first time I came into that big, beautiful church edifice, and I thought I was alone when I came in. But there were so many people inside. The women is on the other side, men is on the other side, and so quiet. And then everything was in order. It's beautiful inside. Forceful preaching, passionate prayer, organized. And then I started learning about the doctrine of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I was so impressed how this church conducts this, their services and how they conduct their, their fellowship. And then after a year, I started to join the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I left my dream of becoming a priest. And here in the Iglesia Ni Cristo, I started my dream to become a minister, enter into the ministry of becoming a minister of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. But just before that date of going there, a man came in, in our house and he said, I am your relative and I'm coming here for a business and I'm going to stay with you guys. And I said, okay, I, I called my mom and he came. 
he's in he has uh, books with him and then he introduced that he is Atlas Ray and he happened to be my uncle and then he stayed with us this man brought a tremendous change in my life with him he never mentioned anything about his religion he never quoted any single text about what his beliefs are but all about his life whenever we eat we offer him something and he said oh I don't eat that food um, if we offer him a drink he does not drink those kind of drinks and then he has a special food he does not eat pork he does not uh, drink coffee and a lot, a lot of those stuff and I just I just wanted to to know why so I just kept it to myself then I usually I, I eventually asked him what is your religion you always go home every Friday afternoon and you come back Sunday morning I just want to know and every time he comes this is something really great pastor whenever he comes into our house I can feel something very different something I couldn't explain but something that I could feel mm. wow that's that's amazing and then I realized that he's a man of God and I have to know what is his religion what is his belief and then he he told me come and see so I attended and that's the first time I know about the Seventh-day Adventist and that's the first time I have ever attended a church worshiping on the seventh day the Sabbath the first time I was ever in the Seventh-day Adventist church I feel the warm welcome of the brothers and sisters the warm fellowship and you could feel that they live by what they believe that's the one thing and so there come he introduced me to a pastor named Salvador Dieta and the, this pastor introduced uh, me to the members and then he told me he learning that I I draw and paint so he told me I have something for you to, to draw and paint can you do it for me and then yes I told him yes so he handed me a piece of literature to be drawn and it has those uh, kind of things from Daniel 725 and then it has this uh, text that 1844 and so on and so forth but when I draw these things I have another question in my mind what are these texts saying all about hmm. and then I began to ask the minister about the 1844 about the 2300 days prophecy about the the mark of the beast and all these things about the Sabbath it's in the Ten Commandments and you know what he said You're these saying. things if you want to learn you have to ask the Seventh-day Adventist that's what he confessed <laughs> to me and said okay now I know I have to go and ask the Seventh-day Adventist about all these things and so that started my journey through the painting that I have and through those letterings that I made I discovered that there is truth yet to be known Mm. And I started again my journey this time. Mm. So I started to get my Bible and I started to study it this time with more understanding, with deeper understanding with it. So I praise the Lord, Pastor. Amen. He led me this far and now I'm rejoicing that I am the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And then there are so many things that happened, you know, in the way as I have just embraced the truth. Did you then meet some opposition as you transitioned from... Uh the Church of Christ to Seventh-day Adventism? There, there was, Pastor. Exactly right when I, I was just baptized a week after, that was March 14, 1992. I still remember. That's the first Sabbath after I got baptized. Five o'clock in the morning, my older brother came in into my room. He was drunk and he has um, two by two wood. A piece of wood and he's going to hit me on my bed and finally he got to my bed and he opened uh, the pillow and he hit the bed uh, fortunately I wasn't there I don't know why it's a miracle that I did not sleep in there and then when I look at him he has a blood uh, shut eyes and he's shouting at, at the top of his voice and I said I'm going to kill you you're putting our family into shame you are a Catholic, then you transferred to Iglesia and Christian, and now you become to you became a Seventh-day Adventist. What a shame to our family. And then he got this bolo, a jungle bolo, and he ran after me. Tell me, what is a bolo? Okay, a bolo is a machete. It's oh like about eight inches. So your brother got a machete. He got a machete and he jumped out on me. I was in my sleeping clothes, and so I jumped out of the window, actually, literally. 
That's about 5.30 in the morning and there were so many people in front of our house because they have heard the commotion that is shouting of my, gra- of my brother. Wow, and I said, where do I go? It's early in the morning, I saw my friends and it's Sabbath. But I remember the text in Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. You have to rejoice when you are persecuted for my name's sake. Great is your reward in heaven. That's the text that is in my mind. Lord, I'm going to stand for you. Your word is true. Now it is the evidence that you really are. And so I ran out of my house. And that's the last time I saw my brother and my sister and my family. That's too bad. The, the pastor who baptized me took me. And he, I stayed with him. And uh, I'd been a stranger to my family ever since that time. But I have embraced a new family, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So I'm so glad that I have come to know the belief and the faith of Jesus. I have just loved my family. We're glad you're our brother. That's right, that's right. We have a great family. But I'm going to share to you, Pastor, that God is good. That ever since I left the Catholic faith, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, and I have embraced the truth that is in Jesus here in the Bible, I remember the one last time before I just have made my decision to become a Seventh-day Adventist and just before I got baptized. The minister of the Iglesia Ni Cristo came and we have a final encounter. And he just asked me a question and he said, which doctrine are you going to accept in your life and to live thereby? The doctrine of the Iglesia Ni Cristo or the doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist? And I said to him, I'll just accept the doctrine of the Bible. He repeated the question five times, and I repeated my answer five times. And then he shouted at the top of his voice, You are forsaking the church. I didn't say anything. I just said, I'm going to just accept the doctrine of the Bible. Amen. That means now I'm rejoicing. I just admire those people. They are so lovely. They are so faithful to the Lord. But I hope they will accept the call of Jesus to come out of the confusion and just accept the truth. The, the Word of God that is in here in the Bible. So now I'm rejoicing in the Lord, a Seventh-day Amen. Adventist, and now I'm looking forward to the coming of Jesus. While Amen. we are looking forward to that, Pastor, it is our joy to share this message, the truth, the truth Amen. of salvation, you know. Amen. So now I'm here in Del Mar. It's my privilege to, to share that the gift that God has given me, the art, the gift of art and painting, so this painting that God has given me, it's a sermon in itself. And I'm glad Amen. that God has used me, even though I couldn't preach Amen. like that. But anyway, that God has given me the privilege to do that big mural, the story of how Jesus saved us and is going to save us still when he comes. Is it my, is my understanding right as the literature was going out that when people ask, what is this book, The Great Controversy? that some of our people said, well, here, it's right there in the painting. Exactly right, Pastor. That's right, yeah. That's right. It's all there from Eden <laughs> to Eden, to from, Eden. The, from the creation until the recreation that Jesus will uh, accomplish as it's described in the last two books of the Revelation. Mm-hmm. Very good. It's very nice. We're so glad that you were here with us and shared this with us. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Tunay ngang gumagawa ang ating mapagmahal na Panginoon sa iba't ibang panahon at maging sa iba't ibang paraan. At kung atin siyang muling matagpuan, kailanman ay hindi niya na tayo pakakawalan. Kaya't purihin ang pangalan ng ating Panginoon ngayon at magpasawalang hanggan. Siya nawa.